welcome to Not My Monkeys podcast second live video. Um, this is Rosie speaking here and Ruby is joining us on the technical side of things. Ruby, am I sideways? Or am I correct way up with the video? I'm asking the question, do I have the same problem that you had last time basically or am I all right? And when, Cir and when Circus Diaries joins me, I will add them. So I hope that you are. Oh, perfect. Great. Okay. Well, communicate with, communicate with Kate. So Kate Kavanagh is who we will be interviewing today. And she is uh, very exciting. We're just going to wait for her to join before I sort of run through everything. Um, so I'll just... Uh, we're just going to give her the heads up that we're on Instagram and she will be Circus Diary. She's going to join us just momentarily. Um, so uh, it won't be long, guys. Don't worry. Hopefully um, she's just probably just switching over from, um, from Facebook to here. Let me see if I can find her on our list of people who are already watching. Um, maybe. I'll just wait. I'll just wait for her to to see. Um, hi, everybody who's joining us. We're going to be interviewing uh, Kate Kavanagh from um, Circus Diaries in a few moments. So hopefully... Oh, my God, Circus Diaries have joined. Yes, I can now add them <clears throat> and I know how to do this because beep press that huh wow so okay here's a fun thing about your circus diaries account you are not allowed to join from your circus diaries account because <laughs> This is maybe where we've had the problem. There is a special mention underneath your Circus Diaries um, link when it shows up and it says unable to join with live things. And I don't know if that's because they're both pages or what, but maybe this is also not going to work. Which would be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> if that also happened... Um, Kate, do you have a private Instagram account or not? Also, are you on the phone to Ruby right now? Because I feel like, um, she might be able to explain it better what's going on. We'll find out. Invite all your followers of all the people that are watching and who, the one person who I'm not allowed to invite, I'm not allowed to invite the Circus Diaries, apparently. Which is so weird and I don't know why but I assume that it's because you are a page, like, and not a real, you're not an individual person. Um, okay, thank you, Kate. Again, apologies. This is very confusing. Yes, Ruth, yes. Thank you, everyone, for your patience and for trying to make this work. We'll see how it goes. Keep reading all the comments. I'll see if someone joins and and then um, we'll be able to do the interview. It's not going to be very exciting for a little while. I'm probably going to just say the exact same things as I said while I was stalling for time on the Facebook live feed. Um, oh, Flo's joined. Hi, Flo. Um, also, Starry Phoenix. Hi, Starry Phoenix. <laughs> that That's okay. Uh, Kate, I will still um, add you via your personal account but I won't mention it, like I won't uh, try to link people to it and I'll just keep saying Circus Diaries so that then it's heavy on the Circus Diaries. Hello? Hello? Right. Oh, okay. It's doing it. It's doing it. Woo! 
<laughs> Connecting. Hey! Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. And I can take this off because I'm not on my computer. I'm on my phone because I don't know my password. And, yeah, that was technology. Technology, man. Am I right? Oh. That 2020 has been nothing if not a year of learning that I'm old and technology has moved fast. <laughs> yes. I think really, if anything, um, that, that experience was very encompassing of the year as a whole, just trying to do things <laughs> and the actual world itself just being like, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> we were We'd so well it. planned, so prepared. And we were so planned, we were so ready. And then Facebook was just like, no, thank you. Yeah. Well, you know what? Never mind you, Facebook. We're going to go to your other owned media account, which is Instagram. <laughs> and we're just going to do it there instead. <laughs> thank you, Luke, for joining us. Um, thank you, Flo, for joining us. Thank you, um, Ruby Circus for joining us. Thank you, Starry Phoenix and Tia and the Flying Bells. All the people who have joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the first, actually, it's now not the first, it's now the second Not My Monkeys <laughs> podcast live interview. <laughs> If you uh, were with us through the technical issues that Facebook proposed, then thank you for putting up with us. Oh, um, but we've made it. We're here. If you're a regular yep. listener, thank you for coming along and for your continued support. We appreciate it and we appreciate you joining in with the discussion of Circus. If this is your first time joining us, we are pleased to have you here and we hope that you enjoy the following interview. For all those that have sent questions in to our guest this evening, thank you very much. We are still accepting questions, so pop them on over and Ruby will do her best to field them over to me and we'll hopefully get them answered uh, through the course of the interview at just, you know, when there's a good time to do that. Um, so let me... <laughs> introduce our fabulous fabulous guest this evening um we uh tonight we will be speaking to i keep saying we because i keep thinking me and ruby but it's just me it sounds very strange um, tonight i will be speaking to a fantastic guest an amazing circusy person <laughs> it is as, as you can see below me the fantastic kate kavanagh hello Hello. Hello. I'm feeling like really un Christmassy compared to your picture. Oh, I know. I, to I, I really went for it. Maybe I should tone it down a bit and just have a point. No, no, it's good. Like... I particularly like the contrast <laughs> between it's sort of Christmassy, but it sort of isn't because it's the Grinch, but it's. Oh. Yes. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm very into the Grinch. So he's like, you know, Christmas. Um, also, I'm trying to post on Facebook that we're now on Insta whilst mm. talking. I don't know how that's going to work, but. Yeah, well, people will find us if they care, right? People will right? find us. People will find us. So, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. And also, I think Ruby will do a really good job of cross-posting everything and telling everyone where we are. So, fingers crossed. This is why it's good to have two people <laughs> doing the thing rather than just one. Um, so, Kate, circus critic, writer, supporter of all things circusy, runs the website called Circus Diaries which has many, many, many reviews of circus shows on. Um, so go check that out, people. She also runs Circus Voices Scheme, which uh, me and Ruby both have taken part in in the past, uh, sometimes multiple times, <laughs> which was a project to help create discussion uh, around the critique of circus. She's also a giggle doctor for the Theodora Children's Charity, a writer and currently studying for her PhD. Wow. Okay. <laughs> welcome and just to get us started would you like to tell us a little bit about how you came into this crazy world of circus oh okay yeah so um my background is in um uh, theater but like uh physical devised theater rather than classical acting necessarily mm -hmm. um and there was a point in my my illustrious acting career uh, where I decided I needed to learn more physical skills so I could be better employed and there was a volunteering opportunity with No Fit State Circus at the time which was going on tour with their show Taboo mm -hmm. in 2000. Which is a Wales-based circus is that right? It is yeah. 
Yeah, it's they're based Karen, in Cardiff, sorry. and I'm now based in Cardiff, but I wasn't at the time. So let's come around. Um, but yeah, they were on a they were on a national tour. Yeah, a national tour and then a European tour, and I went for two weeks and then stayed for the season and then came back again next season and um, realised that I wasn't going to be able to improve my physical skills to an employable circus level ever because uh, I just don't have that kind of obsession. Um, okay. But I do have the right kind of obsession to write about circus and to think about circus. And that's yeah. how I eventually ended up because, I don't know, my performance career took a bit of a turn when I was living in a bus and there was a fire. And then I was like, I just need to do something a little bit more stable. And clearly writing is more stable than performing. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And, and yeah, and now I'm in a position where I'm actually being paid to research and write about circus doing a PhD as a funded position, which is amazing. It took a while to get that here. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, no, that is amazing. That's a, a great. Do you want to tell us a bit um, what your PhD study in revolves mm -hmm. around or just like a quick little snippet well, of it? Yeah. OK, so I'm actually in a, in a school of English communication and philosophy. Um, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> so I'm using linguistics methods to look at how circus is represented or how, how um, circus is seen as valuable in reviews, uh, in marketing materials, and then through talking to audience members as well and comparing how those values line up. And that's the plan. Okay, cool. Well, that's very, that sounds very interesting. And I'm sure that we will be... Um in the future asking you questions about that once you have uh, gathered all your data <laughs> yeah. not that there's much to gather at the moment but you know this is it i was supposed to be at glastonbury festival this summer doing all audience yeah. interviews in jay's brilliant circus tent um but that may happen next year it may not it may be 2022 but i've been collecting lots and lots of reviews in the meantime um and finding out some some kind of some some stuff that i sort of knew but now i have evidence to prove it that there's certain types of circus that get reviewed much less and certain types of circus that get reviewed much more and mm. so what's represented in kind of papers and stuff isn't necessarily the whole scene the whole picture yeah okay so yeah. we're kind of always getting like just a snapshot of circus through reviews this actually leads perfectly onto my next question uh, because one of your main projects kate has been the creation of a website called circus diaries mm. which is about well it has on it lots of uh, critiques and reviews of various circus shows traditional and contemporary mostly uk or like europe touring ones uh, but also you i know you went like all over the place reviewing circus and stuff like that so would you like to tell us a bit about its creation and why you felt the need for it to to be like the gap in the market kind of thing to exist yeah well i suppose it, it, this goes back to then that first tour that i was doing with no fit state because at the time i'd, I'd gone in because i thought well physical skills circus that goes together but what I hadn't expected was to have my eyes opened to all these different types of circus and this whole kind of community and world and mm. arts sector that I had been blind to. Because in my head, circus was, you know, from, from Disney's Dumbo or um, mm. Barnum and Bailey, and this kind of thing. And, you know, it's much wider than that. Um, so as I was finding this out, doing this tour, I was like, well, I, I need to know more. Uh, and I couldn't find more online at the time, and it was really frustrating. Um, so then eventually, with this frustration and the kind of change in my own circumstances, I was like, well, I'll just write some stuff, and then the next person who finds, who, who's trying to follow this trail will find something, and then hopefully that person will write something, and or, like the trail will grow. And it has been growing, definitely, over the last like decade, um, I mean, I started the Circus Diaries in 2013, I think. I probably shouldn't know that, shouldn't I? But, um... <laughs> it's fine. But, but, no one's yeah. checking, checking here. It's fine. Um, um, but we'll yeah, say, definitely. We'll say, so like, over like seven years, maybe it's been going, which is a really long time. 
yeah <laughs> it is yeah. when you say it like that <laughs> yeah. but now but like th- things like you know you guys have a podcast and and there's all these zines coming out and stuff and particularly this year the 2020 as much as ever like so much has been awful I think there have been some really good things coming out in terms of um like circus people can't haven't been able to make work in the same way or present work in the same way so there's been more discussion and there's been more sharing of mm-hmm. kind of ideas like these zines that um you and Ruby were talking about on your last Instagram thing and I really wish I'd been there to geek out with all these like books and magazines that you were talking about um we were geeking but, yeah. out so hard over all the books yeah <laughs> like look at the things look at the things look at the <laughs> I have written words, I swear. Let me join in. <laughs> iridescent spine. Ah, oh, that's nice. I look, who doesn't love an iridescent spine on a book? Exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, as part of so, so the the circus diaries for those who are sort of just listening in and wondering, like, oh, what is it? It's a website you can find. You can Google circus diaries, um, and when you go on it. There's all the different like reviews for the circus shows and you can kind of search for things you might be looking for or you can do it in time and date order. Um, but Kate also uh, isn't the only like contributor. So you have like quite a lot of people that sort of go and see different kinds of shows or go and uh, I suppose like see maybe like more of a, a, a specific kind of circus show that you maybe can't get to or that maybe they have more of like a uh, an experience of seeing that kind of show. And so me and ruby who run the not my monkeys podcast blah 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 name dropping my podcast there um we did a circus voices scheme which ran at the edinburgh fringe festival in scotland and we learned many many things about critiquing while doing those few weeks there and oh, good. Um, one of the things <laughs> no problem it was great <laughs> it was really fun actually we definitely like reminisce about it all the time so it was a it's a very very cool scheme um, and one of the things that we uh, learned at learned at that was there are different styles in which uh, critiquing shows can exist. Um, would you like to tell our listeners a bit about the different kinds of reviewing and critiquing and the roles that they would play uh, as a written review of a circus show? Ooh, that sounds like a very <laughs> formal question. Um, yeah, I've got it all written down very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> I guess... Um... I guess at a basic level, there's kind of commercial stuff that is geared towards um, like a not like a generalist audience to try and encourage them to. It's like consumer advice, um, but then at the other end of the scale, there's like academic critique that would be uh, more looking at developing theory and seeing how different pieces fit together and then within that scale you've got different audiences I suppose for who's going to be interested in these reviews like is it people who know a bit about circus is it people who come in like I did 12 years ago going oh it's just Barnum and Bailey and elephants or or is it people who've done some training and have got like a more of a technical embodied knowledge of the field um and really in an ideal world you need to have material and resources available for all these different audiences and all these Mm -hmm. different interests but um yeah that's it's still growing like it's still quite limited to try and find Mm -hmm. what's out there um and and you said written reviews but also like some of the stuff that we've done at edinburgh that's been my favorite has been like visual representations and yeah like the video views and stuff or like using like pictures and things is cool yeah mm. yeah and as you've experienced today my technology is like fairly dated so i don't really i don't generally listen to podcasts i don't do a lot of youtube but i've experimented but like now you kind of younger generations are coming in and like living in your digital world and that's happening and and yeah and what do we do some like word cloud reviews that are on the circus diaries instagram and the graphs that you did rosie and then francesca hyde who's a hair hanging artist she did some like concrete poetry and so these like more 
artistic experiments are really interesting mm-hmm. as well because they like they bring out a different element of the show rather than just trying to describe it it evokes a feeling yeah um, do you think that that's kind of like a classic circus person way of wanting to review a show it's like but i must be creative with it i couldn't simply just write words yeah i don't know it might be because i guess people go into different like walks of life because they have different natural preferences and if somebody's natural preferences are to be kind of physical and embodied then how do you make a review that fits that style and I am quite a literary academic person (laughs) so actually writing these kind of fairly traditional journalistic reviews fits me quite well but it's probably not very interesting to the people who are making circus um I don't know that's no, well, no, I, well, I, I feel like it's interesting, but then again, I, I'm not everybody, so maybe. Because <laughs> but... I know this this video that you did last week with the um, the books and things, and yeah. Ben Ruby was talking about this thinking through circus book, and all the different handwritings in it, and the different drawings in it, and it's just a different um, different way of approaching thought, uh, which seems mm. to fit maybe more with a circus personality than the kind of traditional literary route in which has been established for for theatre studies and stuff but circus Mm. isn't theatre yeah whoa (laughs) are we gonna open that can of worms now well maybe maybe someone will have asked us a question to do with that so Mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll we'll keep that little piece of, of juicy juicy topic discussion and instead i'm just gonna stick to my list of questions (laughs) <laughs> so kate you it is fair to say have seen a lot of circus in your life what are some of the shows that stand out to you and do you find that you remember the good shows as well as you remember the not so good shows Ooh, that's that's an interesting way around of putting it because i would have thought that i'm more likely to remember the good shows than the less good mm. shows but actually yeah there is something about oh, shudders um that that do stick in in your memory um i mean t- take it either way or vice versa you know which yeah uh, yeah whichever way you want i think to. i think what tends to come back to me is not like a particular shows that have been favorites but the more like depending whatever conversation I'm having (laughs) I'll go oh that reminds me of this particular thing and the more shows that I've seen the more links that I can make in those conversations my my partner was showing me um some like weird rave video on his phone the other day and there was a couple of twins who were dancers in it called my bad sister and i was like i've seen them they were in a circus cabaret show in edinburgh that was about uh, ecology and alice in wonderland and that was years ago but it came back to me <laughs> it's a small um, world it's a small world yeah, yeah. so there's always a culture and circus were linked all along <laughs> <laughs> um and i've forgotten what the first part of the question was was it did i have favorites yeah, I well, guess just any any notably great shows, any notably um, disasters that, not that you need to name names or anything, but anything that you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. I think that. I think um, I think actually with me, a lot of it comes down to taste. Like the shows that I will enjoy the most are the ones that are naturally my taste, and that doesn't mean that they're necessarily better it's just that I sit more comfortably in that audience because I know it's going to give me what I enjoy rather than me having to work at it necessarily to see from other perspectives and I really like um pretty pretty visual things mm. like there's a, there a show called My Land by um mm. Hungarian company Recircuel and you know lots of people have lots of things to pick at about it but actually for me it was just so beautiful <laughs> to watch and they were very very highly skilled technical um, performers and lots of different disciplines yeah, as well they are. it's amazing yeah that one really blew my mind and uh yeah i also really liked that one yeah hmm. which is which is interesting because i i heard yeah that a lot of other 
people didn't and I struggle to figure out why <laughs> there's a there's a lot of stuff I think uh because most people that I will talk to about circus shows will be theatre people mm. where there seems to be a much stronger emphasis on meaning than the other elements and adding it all together mm. and a lot of people were reading like there's only this one woman and there's these six blokes and so it must necessarily be a bad thing mm. and and that's not how I saw it um mm. <laughs> like I think there's room in the world for oh god this is terrible ground as well there's room in the world for imbalance in individual shows if there were better balance overall and at the yes. moment there isn't okay. better balance yeah. overall so yeah. in individual shows it's still um questionable but yeah it feels more like glaringly obvious in individual shows when there isn't an overall balance so hopefully yeah. when we get it right oh what is it with you <laughs> and opening all these big big topics <laughs> trying to have a, a fun instagram video and you bring it up. what's next animals and... in circus oh <laughs> Oh, don't mention all the elephants. Oh. Don't mention the elephants. <laughs> no. Don't mention the elephants. I, I, did to see, I was really lucky, I suppose. I got to see the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus the year before it closed because mm. I had some oh, funding money from, from the UK Arts Council mm. to develop my creative practice and go and look at circus in um, North America. And that... I mean, they didn't have animals in the show, which is where this conversation started. But uh, I found that not a disappointment, but not my cup of tea at all, because it's these big arena shows by the time they close down, mm -hmm. these massive sporting arenas and everything is so far away and so distant that the mm. uh, kind of sense of being in it and among it and the excitement was, was a little bit lost for me. It was a very different atmosphere. Um, Were they still doing the three ring thing as well by then, or had they kind of stopped? That? Not really. It was like a big. I think I don't know if it was basketball or what kind of American sport yeah, it was, but like, like a, a big football. stadium, and then you're all up in these like sloping bleachers, and then the clouds clowns come round the bleachers, but everything's really tiny in the distance down on the little floor below, yeah. um, and and so there were some good acts i suppose actually maybe there were big cats in it it's hard to remember now but um yeah it was just so small and so distant i didn't feel connected to it and i can just say that i was there but mm. i don't feel like i was there mm. um, and then the other the other thing that i was quite interested while i was over over the ocean was that i could see some of the most recent Cirque du Soleil stuff and a lot of the time, I think, when I've seen Cirque du Soleil in the UK, it's been old shows that have been mm -hmm. touring for a long time. Um, and I think there's a lot of stuff in the UK press and criticism about, oh, they're just doing the same thing. It's all a bit um, twee. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I felt when I was seeing their new stuff was actually it is still relevant and it is still live and exciting and vibrant, but maybe just the delay of getting to us skews that sometimes yeah yeah or i don't know um yeah do they only choose certain shows to go on tour maybe and then they're all of they're all of a certain formula that they think is going to succeed as a tour so they have to kind of they will all feel a bit samey in that sense like don't know i don't know oh don't they're know. in hot water now as well oh another <sighs> big topic Cirque du Soleil oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> what's your next it. question <laughs> save it for another time save it quick to the next question um i will ask the next question um oh. and the, it is this it is thusly uh <laughs> how do you personally feel about the idea that people say you shouldn't be too hard on people when reviewing a circus show do you think that specifically thinking about circus here that reviewers just need to be encouraging of anyone who's just trying to put something on. <laughs> Act or um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a difference between being encouraging to people who are trying to develop their creative potential 
and saying that something is a higher quality than it is <laughs> and that's a tightrope to walk along and to balance on and I think it I think it comes back to um, what I was saying before about different audiences and different like you know if you're going in to see a brand new theatre company and they've made a show and they want to know what you think of it maybe it might be kinder to send them an email rather than put all your thoughts out into the public sphere mm. but at the same time if what the company wants is evidence that they have done live shows in live venues then having a printed review um can be more beneficial even if even if it what it says isn't the most positive stuff in the world like sometimes just the very presence of having mm -hmm. coverage raises the kind of legitimacy of a show or something like that mm -hmm. um yeah. so yeah i i think it is important to know that real people are real feelings are behind these these shows mm -hmm. but if you're trying to communicate to an audience what's worth or, or what you enjoyed about it then don't pull any punches because otherwise you might be sending people along to see something that they'll hate and then they'll damn all circus with the same brush, mm. which I think is maybe what's happened a little bit in the past. Like pe people mm -hmm. kind of think all circus is the same a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. What's up with that? No. <laughs> Bloody Disney, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Dumbo. Oh. Oh, why I oughta that elephant's yeah. done <laughs> i think i think I it was about time and I don't, oh no, you've got a final question sorry I've i was overlapping you <laughs> <laughs> but you can tell me more if you've got more i'm happy i'm happy to listen anything about dumbo i'm all ears <laughs> <laughs> well i know i was just gonna say and i don't know if it was something you talked with um kate holmes when she was on the podcast because i haven't listened to that yet but um i think there's something about the timing <laughs> of um his history and mass media springing at the same time as circus was having a particular phase in its history and suddenly that mm. incarnation got disseminated here there and everywhere and then as that phase went out like those are the images that we're left with because popular media was mm. so pervasive with films and tv and stuff yeah, it got so heavily represented, didn't it? At like a certain mm -hmm. point of how it existed. And then it's almost difficult to imagine it any other way. That's, mm -hmm. I wonder if that's happened with anything else. That would be good to try and find some comparisons, maybe. If we like, we always picture, you know, New York looking a certain way, but it actually only looked that way for like a decade during when all the films and all the early images and stuff was coming out. And it's like, yeah, you know, interesting. Anyway, you had a final question. File that, file that away. Final question, final question. Okay, because uh, we've been going <laughs> for much longer and taking up your evening much more than uh, we intended. Facebook. Um, okay, final question <laughs> for you tonight. What advice or words of wisdom sort of thing would you like to say to people who are listening out there or who are listening when we put this on like YouTube and stuff uh, who might be thinking of writing about circus or writing about a show or reviewing a show what sort of advice would you give them to get going oh do it do it that's my <laughs> advice just do it um because well actually it's not as flippant as it sounds uh, because when, once you start doing something then you start to find your groove with it and you start to work out what actually matters to you mm -hmm. um and maybe there's some like starting points that you could consider like who who is this for who who am i writing this for um wh why am i doing it what do i want to mm -hmm. share but actually just trying things is gonna inform your practice m more than all the planning in the world could do um and yeah i wanted to because i know um in your I keep coming back to it in your Instagram before of like the different readings and stuff you'd been doing Ruby was mentioning these little zines from um a contortionist yeah. strange wonderful creature oh, wow. You've actually got some as well. I have I've got them both mm -hmm. and um 
and they start off with quite a conventional review of or in the first one it's an act and in the second well they're, they're, they're both acts mm. one more traditional and one more contemporary if i can mm. flippantly use those terms um but then it interrog like as the pages go through it begins to interrogate them in in more ways um mm. but um so that's like i guess a personal project that started and then the instagram channel that they use as well like putting little like the technical terms not stories but that you can follow the the text of the little mini research mm. is really interesting and um mm. so those kind of experiments start to expand the field of what's possible and i did want to i wanted to do a, a little mini shout out as well because this year oh, go on. um yeah there's a there's a swedish organization called circus suit uh, which is like circus with a k and then syd mm -hmm. and they've been holding like a kind of reading discussion groups every week um which has been really good <laughs> for me this year like all the normal stuff that i would do like getting out and seeing shows and going to um like fairs and going to um conventions and stuff like this hasn't happened but because we've had these online weekly meetings i've still been able to talk circus and like have relationships with people that's outside my own four walls um and we've we've like read kind of a chapter a week of different things or these these little online um articles and stuff and then and then talked about them together and then we decided well all these other things are out there being published and the more thoughts are shared about circus the better that is so why don't we share our thoughts and so we've put together a little publication which is being launched next thursday so yeah. um maybe i can send the link to that and then you can put it in the then comments the link, yeah and then we'll be able to link it yeah. into this video and share it and stuff so if you're interested in that and you're listening then check out yeah. the link which will be linked somewhere below hopefully because i think with um with all these other art forms there's just like these really long established histories of talking mm. about the work and writing about it and thinking about it and like the exchange of ideas and that's mostly been just like a physical thing in circus for most of it the history and so the more mm. that the ideas can just spread out into the world the better understanding i think people are going to have of the field and the more development there can be it's that's a good that's good advice right there so do you hear that people who want to do something just do it just do it do it already yeah. and we have actually had some questions from people um, oh. who have been who've been watching so i'm going to ask you them now i'm going to read them off um my little screen um so kate if you're not from a circus family how did you get into circus Ah, um, well, we did talk about this like very briefly at the beginning, um, and it was because I saw an opportunity advertised to go on tour, and the the role was kind of like selling programs and selling like concessions in the interval and things like that, and you know helping put up fences and helping put up the tent, um, and in exchange, then I could get some training off the performers, um, and I I never asked how it was funded because at the time i was more interested in doing than the kind of behind the scenes logistics but it was probably smarts council money that allowed you, like, that ran to away to join the circus basically that's how you did it you just... yeah and i try to avoid saying that because it's such a cliche <laughs> um, but yeah i just run away with them for a little while a little while did. just kind of in a way yeah. in a way and then you then you run then you were like oh, i'm gonna run back the circus yeah. ran away with me. Is that? Yeah, is that yeah, it? exactly. They chose you. <laughs> that was their thing. I've got another question from someone here as well, which I'm going to ask. Um, Kate, is it awkward when you have to review the show of someone that you know if you don't like it? So uh, if you don't like a show, but you know the person who made it or is in it. Mm. Yeah, that's awkward. It's really <laughs> awkward. <laughs> um and luckily it's not happened to me too much and um 
and what I can quite often do is find things that maybe even though I don't enjoy them I could see that they could maybe be appreciated from another angle mm -hmm. so I can sort of say well if you like this kind of thing then you would might like this mm -hmm. um I think there might have been a couple of times where I've I've maybe dropped somebody a personal email either before the review goes live just to warn them and to apologize <laughs> um, or to drop them feedback in person rather than putting anything public but I think usually there's there's a sensitive way and, and actually sometimes what happens is I think I've said something perfectly fine and and like positive or neutral but an artist has really been upset by that because it's not what they thought the show was supposed to yeah, do and even though maybe i've had a good time wanted. it's yeah. not been on the same level as what they were expecting me to say mm. um so yeah it's awkward <laughs> but i think it's but you still get over painful. it yeah because <laughs> oh, the alternative is that people don't get their reviews and actually like particularly people who are looking for arts council and funding if you can have a dossier and go, well, look, I got this coverage and I got this coverage, it proves that you're at least being seen, yeah. <laughs> which is, is helpful in a lot of times. That is very true. Um, I concur. You can hear my cat making weird noises in the corridor. <laughs> I could hear that, something. I wondered what that was. Yeah, that's wrong cat. Little cat. Join in, little cat. I did it! <laughs> That's so funny. Well, that is a perfect time to sum up and end the interview. Thank you, everybody who has dropped by and for checking out this and for sticking with us. Thank you for people who have sent in via either our Patreon or while we were chatting some questions. Um, if you enjoyed this, then there's plenty more where that came from on the podcast, Not My Monkeys podcast. You can like and subscribe, add and tweet, hashtag and share, all those things. It all makes a difference. Find us on all social media and everywhere that you can get podcasts. We also have a website, notmymonkeys.com. Kate is now going to plug her things. Yeah, because clearly I'm not here under my professional account. I'm I'm expecting a baby in March, which is really exciting. Um, ah, I okay. started an Instagram about being pregnant, which I've not continued because I'm really bad at using Instagram. But my official one is the Circus Diaries, <laughs> which if you scroll up the comments, I did I was in here first as the Circus Diaries, mm -hmm. so you can find the circusy stuff that way. And it's also Facebook and, and also go on Facebook. Twitter, the actual website. We will link it all under the Facebook and on our Instagram. So if you want to find Circus Diaries, just follow that link. Don't follow the link. That Kate... Oh, there. Thank you, Ruby. Yeah, follow Kate at the Circus Diaries. Okay. Oh, Perfect. Well done, Ruby. She's on the ball tonight. <laughs> it's good having a, having a background person, isn't it? Isn't it oh, great? We should have more often. It's so great. Just someone sat there, I assume, hacking away at the mainframe. Or something. She's in the matrix, <laughs> like fighting the code, and I'm just sat here being like, Ruby, my video's not loading. And then, you know, <laughs> it all gets sorted. Um, thank you so much, Kate, for joining us and for doing this. Obviously, it's been fabulous to see you as well. And you are a very dear friend to the Not My Monkeys team, and we assure you that we shall see you again possibly to harass you more more questions <laughs> <laughs> when we're allowed to see each other again in in oh, real human terms someday. oh the future yeah <laughs> someday in the future if it ever happens oh. and congratulations <laughs> on being pregnant and we're probably gonna we'll chat you we'll chat you we'll chat in so. or something yeah cool all right well have, have a lovely christmas and um see you when i see you Thanks for having me. All right, I don't actually do. know how to turn this off, so I'll just kind of sit here until it stops. Good idea. I'm just going to wave. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>